As we inch ever closer to the winter months, you may have thought to yourself, you know, 2016 has been pretty good so far. And if you have, at least part of the reason is that you didn't commit to reading the fucking Quran this year. But we did. And the result is that I haven't looked forward to a ball dropping this much since puberty. <laughs> I feel like one of mine dropped, but the others stayed put. Is that normal? I feel like that, too. It's like an Astro Jax. That's, <laughs> that's standard, right? That's a Toy Store Insider deep cut for those yeah, of you at exactly. home. Yeah, exactly. Astro Jax are anal beads a guy's wife found. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, joining us for the anti-penultimate Quranomaniac segment is the lovely and still somewhat under the weather Lucinda Illusions. Lucinda, so glad you haven't divorced me over this yet. That you know of. Ooh. Okay, well, while I text Andrew about sheltering some income, I'll let you start us off with Surah 56, The Inevitable, or The Inevitable Event. All right, and of course, the inevitable event in question is the Muslim Judgment Day, where the earth shakes and the mountains all turn to dust. Yep. But the new bit here, I guess, is that we'll all be divided into three groups. The forward group, the right group, and the left people. Yeah, the <laughs> apocalyptic on-sign kick of destiny. <laughs> yes. And genuinely, the wording here is like, and those guys on the left, they'll be on the left. Motherfuckers right. on the right, <laughs> fucking right. But the foremost who's, motherfuckers, who's foremost, downright <laughs> Trumpian. Right? Well, the Saudi version is more confused than anything else in this part, and, and also kind of angry about being confused. When I was like, okay, so... Those on the right hand, uh, who's on the right hand again? It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those on the left hand, wait, wait, wait who's on the fucking left? Who's on the, line, <laughs> line, or whatever. Fuck you guys. The front people are at the the front. I'm a hundo p on that. <laughs> Assholes. It's like uh, drunk friends trying to figure out who's riding with who in a Denny's parking lot. Just like, I, okay, so <laughs> if I sit on my lap while I drive, we're fine. <laughs> Essentially, this is Mo calling dibs on the best heaven. Right, yeah. Be because we already knew about the people on the right that get unspoilable rivers of milk and the mm -hmm. people on the left who get really hot soup. <laughs> but apparently the forward group gets all the best stuff. Well, and that consists of, quote, a large group of the early believers and a lesser number of the <laughs> later generations, <laughs> end quote. <laughs> so like an early adopter yeah. bonus. Right, right. Something. First hundred callers. Mo turns into Billy Mays here, but don't answer yet. <laughs> also, I have to address this. We got the best possible piece of feedback we could a few weeks ago. Uh, apparently, there is a rare, and most people apparently know this. I did not. Apparently, there is a rare but still used apologetic about the Huri or the virgins and that's that the virgin is actually a mistranslation of raisin. That's yep. right. <laughs> what? Sun made. 72 fucking <laughs> motherfucking raisins waiting for a guy. And I have to admit, it will be worth Islam being true and going to Muslim hell as long as I get to watch a suicide bomber show up in heaven to a bowl of 72 raisins. <laughs> I mean, I'm 100% in. <laughs> Hold on, though. I think it works either way. You ever fuck a bowl of raisins? Don't sleep on raisins. Just, I like the wrinkles. Good times. <laughs> Do I have a senior citizens dating site for <laughs> yeah, you? Right. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Blue Apron. <laughs> Don't eat those. And then uh, Mo goes all Kim Jong Un and doesn't know how wine works. Right? He he promises the forward people the best wine, quote, neither causing headaches nor intoxication, end quote. That's not. Yeah, one of those parts of the description has to be wrong. <laughs> no better way to win me over than with wine for cats. <laughs> right? Also, don't forget that you get the fruit that you prefer. So, yes. you know, <laughs> bananas will be there. Banana wine. Yeah, so like the good like part it. of the fruit salad. Yeah, exactly. Like that bullshit <laughs> cantaloupe filler. Yeah, the good parts. Also, we get a reminder about the creepy team of immortal boy slaves that's mm -hmm. going to be there. Um, but there was one part that I didn't understand here. Why would anyone want a recliner made of metal string <laughs> and really sharp gemstones. That That's the chair situation in Top Heaven. It sounds yeah. terrible. I don't know. He also gives us a brief, it's still pretty good description of runner-up heaven, and he's clearly trying to make it sound not quite as good, but still perfect. So couches, sure, but not encrusted with precious stones. <laughs> right. But comfy, not comfy enough to you know, fall asleep during the game on, but right, right, comfy. But... <laughs> 
That sounds so much goddamn better than like piano wire and jagged diamond. <laughs> <together>. <laughs> right. They don't even have couches in top heaven, only thrones. You probably can't even see the person next to you. Like super <laughs> awkward. You're craning around. You can't cuddle. Yeah, no, it sucks. <laughs> Piano Wire and Jagged Diamonds is the name of me and Heath's jazz band. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> He also points out here that the virgins will get put to the right so they can fuck the people up at the front. Like, it seems kind of like a bad reward to me. Like, hey, Aisha, good job on the virgin thing. So this is Ahmoud, you know, <laughs> he's a fronter. <laughs> it's like an episode of Black Mirror. Black Muslim. <laughs> And then we move on to those poor bastards on the left. Oh, poor bastards. Yeah, and, and he's still super confused here. Exact words. And those on the left hand, who will be those on the left hand? Well, right. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. I, I, I was trying to figure out, like, does he not know, like, okay, is it facing Allah or, like, is it stage left? How do we do this exactly? And then and listen to this description. He says that they face Quote, scorching wind, scalding water under the shadow of black smoke. Not that cool or refreshing black smoke, <laughs> mind you. Yeah. Like, yes, he, he literally points that, that out. <laughs> yep. So, but so, <laughs> L.A. Like, bad people go to L.A. when they die. Yeah, when they live, when they die. Bad people belong in L.A. That's, that's not just in the emails. Korean. <laughs> Eli Bosnick. And, and and then he tries to take credit for my ball juice, which I found kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, actual line in my translation, Sarah, 56 verses 57 and 58, quote, We have created you. Why then do you not accept the truth? Have you thought about the semen that you discharged? Of course I have. Did you create it or did we? <laughs> End quote. So the argument from can you make nut butter? <laughs> right. a, another new one for me. I don't yeah, know. not really convincing to the female readers. But hey, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying I am very much looking forward to telling people I didn't miss your tits. Allah missed your tits. <laughs> Allah wants to cure your breast cancer. That's his thing. <laughs> and your colon cancer. <laughs> also, uh, I think uh, he, he should have... I think uh, he should have to do my laundry, too, if we're being fair about who <laughs> caused what. I mean, get at least do the sheets, Muhammad. Come on. Yeah, there's a sock under Heath's bed that Muhammad owes at least four washes to. Several <laughs> socks. <laughs> I want to point out that verse 79 is the basis of who can hold the Quran, and it says only the purified can touch the Quran. So that's so that's why you can't touch it if you're on your period or if you haven't washed after sex and you can't take it into the bathroom. So I can say I've violated pretty much all of these. My Quran is red tagged. That's what I'm saying. My Quran <laughs> exactly. is red tagged. <laughs> I, I will say, though, I did have one, like, they're on to us kind of moment when I read verse 82. He's going on and on about how obviously holy the Quran is. And then he adds this at the end. He goes, quote, how can you regard this discourse with disdain? Do you make its denial your means of livelihood? End quote. Ooh. So, yeah. Hmm. Guilty, whatever. Well done. Yeah. Science. Patreon.com forward slash scathing atheist. <laughs> <laughs> that's in the Quran. That's in the Quran. That's not me. That's in the... That's <laughs> The Quran telling you here, yeah. <laughs> and then it's off to Surah 57, the iron, and this one starts off with a page and a half of praising God's dick, but by the end of it, it feels more like panhandling. He goes from God makes day and night and trees and boats to, so how about kicking God a couple of bucks, hey? Right? <laughs> you know, he's good for it. Come on. Come on. How about a cigarette? Maybe just a short one, you know, the one you're smoking. I'll take that one. And he sells it like a local commercial for an investment banker. Like, <laughs> I'll double your goodnesses for a very small fee. Just meet me over at my Starbucks office anytime. <laughs> right next to the strip mall. You need a code to get in. Station. Okay. He also points out that it only took him six days to make the earth again. Yeah, no, it's very fast for earth making, Allah. Yeah, and that's basically this whole chapter. God's so awesome, you should give him money. Yeah. Yeah, there's also a great phrase in here where it says, quote, what aileth you that you spend not in the way of Allah, end quote. So literally, like, why aren't you giving me money? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Muhammad's about to dox me. <laughs> Maybe he needs a new title for the book or like a <laughs> whiny Facebook group or something. <laughs> And that's all we've got to say about that, sir. So now we can move on to sir 58, the pleading or the pleading woman. Mm. Funny, I thought we got the pleading in the last verse. Yes, right. <laughs> also, I want to point out that my version called this surah 
She that disputeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bunch of different titles here, but they all mean the same thing. We're going to deal with the lady concerns a bit here. Mm-hmm. The important shit like when your husband says you are like his mother's back to him. Are you really his mom? Yeah, it's, it's so weird. Which is, as near as I can tell, what we're actually talking about in this surah. Uh, that's all, oh my it's God. ridiculous. I'm pretty sure the Saudi version is literally reminding Muslim men that they can't transform their wife into their mom. Like right. an actual warning about that. Yeah. Like what the fuck was happening in Medina before this? <laughs> right. <laughs> Just gonna rearrange this family picture a little bit. Yeah. You see what's going on there? Uh-huh. Well, I also love if you back away from this for a second, you realize that a euphemism that basically equates to I would sooner ask fuck my mother made it into a holy book multiple, multiple times. times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. Also, if you want to fuck your wife after declaring her to be like your mom's ass, you have to set free a slave first. Mm-hmm. Man, these so aren't problems that. I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's like the I'm not ashamed of holy books. And also, doesn't that mean that to be a proper Muslim, you kind of have to have a ready store of slaves? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, there are other options. Oh, that's right, that's y- right. You can fast for two months or you can feed 60 people. And it doesn't say how right. much you have to feed them. So I'm pretty sure you can fuck your divorced wife for a bag of M&M's. <laughs> it doesn't specify. That, <laughs> that is an ad for Islam I can get behind. Fuck your divorced <laughs> wife for a bag of M&M's. Tom from Cognitive Dissonance, too, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but hold on, I think I have a loophole for this one. So you declare your wife to be your mom's ass, mm-hmm. you enslave her, <gasps> release her, there you and go. then fuck her again. Uh, or, or don't release her and just fuck your slave. I think the principle of fucking <laughs> your slave whenever you feel like it that supersedes the other thing. I feel there. like I feel like Muhammad would agree with you there. Yeah. We also learn that God is apparently standing there every time you meet with people. And it's another one of these like kid telling a joke moments where he's like, and you can't meet with three people because there'd actually be four with God. <laughs> you can't meet so with five stupid. people because then that would make <laughs> six. And unless you were meeting with four people, then God <laughs> would be the fifth one. By the way, this also works for even numbers. <laughs> Be clear. And my friend, my friend has a dog, <laughs> and they're, uh, oh, God damn it. I wish your parents would come back, Muhammad. <laughs> I really don't want And, uh, yeah, if you try to confirm a ninth justice, God reads the phone book until you give up. <laughs> <laughs> or, or threatens to, and then you give up in advance. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the book slips into actual morals for a bit and talks about giving to charity and being nice to other people. Don't worry, don't worry. A couple of verses later, he's talking about all the organs Allah's going to violently rip out of the bad people on Judgment Day, though. So. I know, I got worried for all a done. second. <laughs> yeah, he's like, don't good. turn over a new leaf now, man. We have two more segments to go. <laughs> Mo took his meds for one day. <laughs> yeah, part, part well, of know. one day. Also, I, I want to be, I want to briefly mention the final line of this surah. It, it's talking about all the righteous Muslims, and it says, they are God's party. God's party shall surely enter into a state of bliss. And I only bring that up because that occurs on page 420 in my translation. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Foresight. Nice. And then we get Surah 59, the mustering. And this is yet another example of Mo abusing his power. This whole chapter is about how when the Muslims sack a town, it's probably best if Muhammad gets a way bigger cut than everybody else. Well, Just and, right out of the gate. And he's not even trying to disguise that. No. The best he offers is, I know it's a lot more than my share, but I'm probably going to spend it on orphans and shit. You know me. Now, <laughs> bring me another new bile 11 11-year-old, please. <laughs> Brings a whole new meaning to trickle down. <laughs> it's, it's sticky, though. It doesn't trickle. Yeah. It, that's that's the lie. Yeah. No, the supply side we is We need tighter. an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> the supply side's a lot tighter. It's true. Um, we also get an interesting solution to the refugee crisis here. Apparently, Muslim armies, they're definitely encouraged to attack other people's land and steal all their shit. But then they're supposed to donate a piece of the profits to the survivors of the murder, rape, and conquest that mm-hmm. they just did. So first you cause the crisis and then you d- a little bit fix it. But some of it, yeah, yeah. Right. Put a Band-Aid and, on it. And by the way, of course, the Sac City in question here is Medina, and there's a lot of like, you know, I know the shit that I did to these people who lived here seems really fucked up, but if God didn't want me to do it, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have let me do it stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it, and that is scary as fuck. Like, if I'm able to do it, it's moral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Allah is basically the villain in a Christian movie here. or Right. Or Jesse Eisenberg. He's Jesse Eisenberg in a Christian movie, okay? The worst of both worlds. Give it a couple years. (laughs) Now you see me too didn't do well. (laughs) I enjoyed it. 
Honestly, though, it, it sounds like the Quran is making a good case for Israel's right to exist here. Right. right. Interesting. Um, <laughs> also a good case for making the entire Middle East into a glowing sand pit. Greatest, <laughs> greatest book ever written. Ted Cruz is a much bigger fan than he thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as if that's not bad enough, he goes on to smear their victims by saying, think about it. When you are about to chop their heads off, they were scared of you instead of God. He says that. So how, how holy could they possibly be? Come on. I, I couldn't believe I had to reread that one. And then in verse 21, he claims he can destroy mountains with the Quran. I, this strikes me as a testable claim. Right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I can't do it while you're looking, so <laughs> everybody turn Turn around for 65 million years. <laughs> <laughs> Turn back around. Oh, you're all skeleton. <laughs> what does see Allah go on fool us with Penn and Teller now? Like, we noticed your mountain looks a lot like a bird cage. <laughs> <laughs> Yours does. And that brings us to Surah 60 with the titillating title, She That Is To Be Examined. So like strip search porn. Or at least that's what I was hoping for. And this one starts off with the unambiguous command not to be friends with non-Muslims. And and he makes it abundantly clear that this includes your parents and your mm -hmm. kids and your family and shit. Don't run around with non-Muslims. They secretly want to devour your brain. Right. Yeah, and, and I'll know if you're friends with them because, like, that's the first shit your ears will tell me when you get to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Also, in verse 4, he points out that Abraham hated people who believed the wrong shit, and so you should too. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to be sure I have the right person here. Abraham's the guy who thought it would be a good idea to stab his son to death, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the voice is in his head, and then he stopped at the last second because the voice is in his head. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Good source for epistemology advice. Abraham. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But 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 then at a certain point, like Mo seems to think better of all this stuff, and then a couple verses later, he provides a contradictory instruction that lets you befriend anyone who didn't drive you out of your home. I, I, I couldn't even follow it. <laughs> then we do a deep dive on women appraisal uh, ha and how much you have to pay for Muslim wives versus heathen sex slaves and the like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, you're allowed to buy mail order wives mm -hmm. as long as you pay for shipping and handling. <laughs> Seriously. <Yep. laughs> but, but if they send you a heathen, you can demand like a prepaid return label <laughs> keep them as fuck slaves. Do I have that right? You do. Yes. You do, Book though. If God. you put it in yeah. modern parlance, that's exactly that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, you can do, the, you don't have to do the friends and family payment on PayPal. It's basically <laughs> what getting at here. You can do the buyer's <laughs> protection thing. Yeah. We also get another one of these, which one doesn't belong list from Mo in verse 12. He's describing what you want in a good Muslim wife. So he lists all the shit she has to promise not to do. This list, in its entirety, is not to associate partners with God, not to steal, not to commit adultery, not to murder her children, not to lie, not <laughs> to disobey <laughs> that which is right. Yeah, back, circle back, circle back. <laughs> what? Yeah. But see, I feel like like as he's given that list, he just looks awkwardly at Judy, you know, he's like, not to lie, not to be a bitch, not to murder your children again, <laughs> Judy, <laughs> not to deny that which is wrong. <laughs> Fucking Judy. <laughs> and, then, and then he waffles again and closes the surah telling you not to befriend non-Muslims again. And then it's off to surah 61, the ranks. And honestly, I got to the end of this one and just asked myself, did I read anything just now? Oh, it was, was nothing yeah. happens. No, basically, it just, God, pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Like Larry David. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we, we do get Moses' reference and a little Jesus in there, too. So we still haven't done a single Chronomaniacs segment without being reminded about Moses. Have I told right. you about Moses? <laughs> Moses. We also learned that there's no greater sin than telling a lie about Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully he doesn't count contradiction in there. Otherwise, you know, that's on him. <laughs> uh, also, God, hey, just throwing this out there, loves those who fight for him. And, you know, maybe die for him. Just saying, throwing that out there, just <laughs> testing the waters. <laughs> I did find verse five interesting, though. It, it's that liar thing of trying to establish that everyone already agreed to something that's blatantly not true and they definitely didn't agree to. It says, and remember when Jesus was like, oh, Jews, don't forget that my boy Muhammad is taking over as the next prophet of God after this. <laughs> right. And, and then when Muhammad showed up 500 years later, the Jews were like, boo, boo, liar. <laughs> Remember, we all agreed on how that all definitely happened. We do agree. Next verse already started. Moving on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Done. And just when you're thinking, it's been a while since we went all Hitler in this book, we get to Surah 62, the congregation. And we're only six verses in when we get this little gem. Quote, 
old Jews, so you know it's going to be good. Oh, yeah. If you claim that you are favored by God out of all the people, then long for death if you are truthful. End <laughs> quote. To- and, and then somebody says, does that mean we should also long for death, Mo? And Mo goes <laughs> right. like, yeah, in a minute, we're just waiting for the plane tickets to clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure this verse accidentally points out that all the faithfully religious people on earth should kill themselves Yep, right now. Or if it's against the rules to kill yourself, they should at least be hoping to get murdered at any given moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, yeah, don't worry, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> don't Great worry, message. guys. Allah showed me how the 20th century works out, and there's a lot... It's really great. Uh, he also points out that all Jews are like an ass carrying book. <laughs> <Yeah, that makes laughs> and it's supposed to be a zinger. You can practically see the like winky emoji at the end of the right, fucking right. set. And it's just, you can tell everyone in the room paused and he looked around and they were like, ah, ha, ha, oh, I didn't <laughs> hear you. Get it. That's you a thinker. Donkey can't don't read kill books. me. I mean, I want to die because of the whole thing, but don't. And How about you right. don't know? <laughs> And then we get this like whiplash inducing change of subject. It's all like Jews will die and burn in hell. Fuck the Jews. I can't wait for them all to die straight to. Oh, and we're doing prayer on Fridays, guys. Fridays (laughs) now. (laughs) Bring dip. If everybody wants to bring a different dip, it'll be more fun. (laughs) Also, if anybody wants to go to a movie or something on Friday, you know, don't forget to be a self-righteous prick about, you know, begging out. Very important. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, Muslim God is very clear that you should reply all that you can't make it, use a mass text message, and write on the Facebook wall of the event you can't make it to. (laughs) Very important in Islam, apparently. Exactly. And then it's off to Surah 63, The Hypocrites. And uh, I'm sorry, but who is he even warning us about in this one here? He's basically saying, beware of people who pledge allegiance to God and do all the shit I say they should do. Can't trust those motherfuckers. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, you what? See, you see two people claiming to be Muslims. Uh, always ask the first one if the second one is secretly a spy from Mossad. <laughs> they are. They have to tell you because they always lie. <laughs> always take legal advice from a podcast. <laughs> Well, he points out that people who don't believe have had their hearts closed, and that's why they say this book doesn't make sense. Nice little trick there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it could be right. It could be right. I don't know what this book reads like with an open heart. <laughs> well, at least we know that the dangerous people we should avoid are good looking. He tells us that in verse four. He says, so, so beware of the good looking people. Who you have no reason to be suspicious of. <laughs> yeah, it seems looking. like we're showing problems. But I, but I also feel like this is another example where it all made sense if you knew, like, who Mo was staring at when he said that. <laughs> right. You know, because he, he can't just come out and say, and don't trust Larry. That guy's off. <laughs> right. Larry turns around from the mirror. What now? Sorry. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he also tells us in this story not to let your wealth or your children distract you from your remembrance of Allah. Literal mm-hmm. quote, Those who do so, they are losers, end quote. (laughs) Giving further fuel to my theory that Trump wants to ban Muslims because they know he's stealing from their fucking book. (laughs) Can't wait for Melania's next speech. Starts out with, oh, Jews. (laughs) 54 score and seven years ago. Then we get to Surah 64, the cheating, which starts with another screed about Allah having the best penis ever. Ever. <laughs> uh, it's getting really rough because like, because the surahs are so short at this point that by the time he gets over his obligatory page of God is so awesome, he created all this shit, he's the only God stuff, we're done. Yeah, <laughs> the the surah is over. Not a lot of commentary to add. Now, there is one pretty fucked up sentence in here, though. In verse 14, he says, Believers, even among your wives and children, you have enemies, so beware of them. Hard huh. to imagine how anything good comes of that advice. I'm sorry, are you just summarily tossing out the important father-son bonding yeah, aspect right. of a of a good honor killing? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. I don't want to kill my sister. Come on, it'll be fun once we get there. Yeah. <laughs> you said the same thing about Little League, didn't you? <laughs> we'll go for ice cream afterwards. The okay, fine, fine. Uh, but what's the super soaker for? Why is it, why is it glass? <laughs> <laughs> don't touch that. God. Don't touch that. Oh, Jesus. Uh, And then we get Sarah 65, super promising title here. It says divorce. And the most important thing about divorce, apparently, the thing we learn in the first sentence of the chapter, titled divorce, is that you shouldn't divorce your wife when she's on the rag. 
You've got to divorce her when she's pure. <laughs> right, right. And also, don't run her out of the house unless she's a real bitch. <laughs> yeah. And apparently the no divorce during menstruation thing is so important that he even includes instructions on how to divorce a menopausal wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and what to do if the wife you're divorcing is pre pubescent <laughs> and hasn't had her period yet. It says, is Surah 65, verse 4, in the case of those of your wives who have passed the age of menstruation, if you have any doubt, know that their waiting period is three months, and that will apply likewise to those who have not yet menstruated. Right, yep. so for clarity, Mo just gave us a how to divorce your prepubescent wife advice. <laughs> nice to have a book of morals, otherwise I it wouldn't know important. whether or not that was right or wrong. <laughs> I feel special. Yeah, and uh, one other detail from the awesome book of morals, mm. <laughs> the rule for divorcing pregnant women is you have to wait until they're like crowning. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then and only then is it appropriate to divorce them. Yeah. Okay, breathe. Morality. Breathe. Sign these papers. I just feel like it's not working out. We become roommates more than lovers. And breathe. And you are my mom's ass. <laughs> He also prescribes a tit juice fee mm -hmm. if your divorced wife is still suckling your kid here. He doesn't say what it should be. He just says that you should compensate them in some way if they're yeah, still suckling. Yeah, pay for the tit juice. Yeah. And it also says that if she tries to price gouge you, you're allowed to outsource. It yeah. says that specifically. Hey, it, yes, does. it does. And, and the Saudi version is even crazier. It says that if she charges too much for the breast milk, quote, then some other woman may give suck for him, the father of the child. Yeah, what? End quote. So, <laughs> okay, just to recap. Please. If you divorce your wife while she's crowning, <laughs> and then she tries to overcharge for breastfeeding, <laughs> you, the father, should start suckling breast milk from another woman <laughs> and, I guess, snowballing it into your baby's mouth. Oh, God. Pretty sure that's what it's saying. Uh, which is the... Uh, non-strawberry version of the milkshake. That's a callback to <laughs> something we're going to record later. Google, listen, the thing is you want to Google all these terms and show them to your kids. Show them to your kids. That's the key. And also, I just minor point, but he tosses this Kubrickian ending onto this one. At the very end, it says... You know, it, it is God who created the seven heavens and the same number of earths. And then he just ends it. Like... But what the fuck is up with these six other Earths? You were, we're not going to dig into that at all? Okay, well, there's nope. Civil War. There's the one where the Watchers make everyone fight for their amusement. There's the one where Spider-Man's black. I don't know that one. Deep Space Nine. Deep yeah. Space Nine in there. Yeah, yeah, well, good to get that all cleared up before we wrap the segment. So with 42 pages and 48 surahs to go, we're going to leave you there for the time being. Guys, only two more Corona Maniac segments to go, then we never have to open this fucking book again. Have you ever more looked forward to the end of a book. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, but I just read American God, so that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I looked forward to the end of the Bible longer. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good point. Good point. 